thought I hit record. Okay, and start my screen here. Okay, <clears throat> so today uh, we'll try to get through two more lessons. We're going to start with advanced subject verb agreement. Uh, by the time you complete this lesson, you'll be able to make correct subject verb agreement in cases where the verb does not immediately follow the subject. So we're going to run into this when we get into more complex sentences, uh, and sentence structure where, uh, you know, above and beyond things like, uh, he walks the dog or the dogs eat their food. You know, those simple constructions where you have the subject and verb right together, it's real easy to pick out, uh, you, know, what, you know, what the subject is, you know, is it singular, is it plural, and then matching it with a singular or plural verb. So as it gets more complex, we've got to identify that subject, identify whether it's singular or plural, and uh, the lesson today is going to help us do that, all building on this idea of creating sort of more complex sentences. Okay, let's listen here. As you learned in lesson seven, subject verb agreement is usually clear when a verb immediately follows the subject. However, verbs do not always follow subjects. Mismatched subjects and verbs often occur in sentences with compound subjects. Subjects that sound plural, such as everyone. Subjects that include indefinite pronouns that can be singular or plural, like all. Sentences beginning with there is or there are, or with other constructions in which the verb does not follow the subject. Compound subjects separated by nor. And subjects that include prepositional phrases that come between the subject and the verb. Yep, and so those are all ways that we're going to encounter this more um, complex advanced subject verb agreement, uh, whether it's distance between the verb or the subject, or the use of words like all uh, or, uh, you know, nor, there is, there are, uh, all of which can kind of make it a little more difficult to, to target, zone in where the subject is and the verb that should match. And we'll have uh, some examples here and some exercises to help. So the rule uh, that they have a compound subject connected with and takes a plural verb, regardless of how far apart the subjects appear in the sentence. <clears throat> so just like uh, we talked about before with verb uh, subject agreement, if it's uh, compound, if you're talking about him and her, or you know, sort of a series of, of things, uh, you know, the book, the coffee table, and the newspaper, you know, those are all sort of going to be used as plurals. So the case they have here, you're putting in an uh, adjective uh, in front of that second subject. So the woman and that snarling dog in the silly pink raincoat we saw last night at dinner are walking down the street. So walking, oh, I'm sorry, <clears throat> all of that women and that snarling dog in the silly pink raincoat we saw last night at dinner. All you're looking for really in here to identify the subject is the woman and the snarling dog. That's, that's your subject. Uh, or, you know, you can you can simplify it even further, the woman and the dog to help you identify which, uh, uh, whether you need a plural or singular verb. <clears throat> and then same the second one, compound subjects are joined by nor. The verb agrees with the subject that is closer. So just like or, nor works the same way. Neither money nor many vacation days make this job appealing. So here, days, that's the word that you need to target. Money and vacation days, that's, that's, the, that's the two items. So days, plural, you need your plural verb, make, neither money nor many vacation days make this job appealing. Assigns, 
or interruptions that come between subject and verb. We just talked about interruptions last week where we you know, set aside these little phrases or a clause in between commas um, that add information. So asides or interruptions that come between subject and verb do not make a singular subject plural. So don't let that confuse you when you add this additional little bit of information. The example, Janice's brother, in addition to her parents, is moving next week. Brother is still the subject. Janice's brother. Don't have to worry about the, the subject in, in, the, in the comma there, in between the commas. If you're looking to make the verb and the noun agree, it's Janice's brother, in addition to her parents, is moving next week. So moving being your verb. When a prepositional phrase comes between a subject and verb, agreement is not affected. So sort of the similar case here. The river at the base of the mountains runs quickly. River, that's your subject, runs, that's your plural verb. You could easily take that information out. The river runs quickly. We add that prepositional phrase to give us more information at the base of the mountains. Does not change the uh, verb uh, subject agreement. River is still your subject, not mountains. Each one of, sorry, let me just put that up. Each one of and every take a singular verb. So we talked about uh, sort of like collective verbs and I think I'll mention again here, sort of in that same sense, these are singular verbs. One of the soccer players kicks the ball. A number takes a plural verb. The number takes a singular verb. So they're examples. A number of people ride the bus to work. So ride is the plural verb there. A number is our subject. The number of potholes in the road is dangerous. So that's treated as singular. The number is the subject. Potholes is our singular verb. All, none, any, some, more, and most can be singular or plural depending on their use. So here's where you got to watch things a little bit. Um, you got to look for the, uh, the rest of the information that's involved here. And their examples are perfect here. All the trees are blooming. Trees in this case are, uh, trees is plural, the subject is plural, are is going to be our plural verb. All the water is missing from the fish tank. In this case, water, singular, is, will be our singular verb. The subject follows the verb in there is or there are constructions. Is or are must agree with the subject. There are a pot and pan missing from the kitchen. Collective nouns like jury and navy take singular verbs and pronouns when the group acts as a whole. Here's where you gotta be careful because um, it's easy to confuse collective nouns versus plural nouns, and vice versa. So we mentioned, you know, collective noun, it's, it may be a group of people or things, like this case, they have jury, Right. We know that's typically, you know, a, a 12 person jury or what have you uh, that's going to, you know, set and, and uh, make a verdict on, on a court in a court hearing. Uh, but jury itself is treated as a single entity. So that's going to be a singular verb. The jury delivers its verdict. That's singular. Now, if it was children. Right, we know that's actually plural of child. So that would be a plural subject. So you have to be real careful in those usage. And sometimes it's just knowing the difference between the two. All right, so on to our quiz. Okay, have our examples here again. And then our using logic here. Sentences that ask questions may cause subject verb agreement problems because part of the verb comes before the subject. For example, 
does Ken or Amy want to attend? Remember the agreement rule. So again, you know, you have to be careful of which, uh, you know, if you have more than one noun, you have to be careful, make sure you're identifying which one is the correct subject. Okay. Capri, you want to take this one? Sure. In his pockets was a pencil. I'm sorry. In his pocket was a pencil, a piece of cheese, and a phone. Which correction should be made to this sentence? Change pocket to pockets. Change was to were. Change was to is. Change a phone to two phones. I think the answer is B. Yep, very good. Uh, right to it. Change was to were. It's B. And here's some, you know, some more kind of test taking uh, advice for you. <clears throat> it's unlikely that, you know, in this case, we're not going to want to change the subject or, you know, in his pockets. We're not going to make that plural because it's only supposed to be one pocket. We don't want to change how that sounds. Um, so, you know, keep that in mind. Well, we certainly wouldn't change to two phones because that's also changing the, the entire structure and the idea. Uh, so we want to make sure that we keep the idea intact. And in that case, that helps you eliminate some of those choices. Okay. And on to our passage. I'll read it. And we'll just fill these in as we go. Uh, to whom it may concern, it is with great pleasure that I write this letter of recommendation for Ricardo Sanchez. Mr. Sanchez interned for Walter's architectural group for the last two summers. He was an integral part of our team. Neither his fellow inter interns nor his direct supervisor. What is correct here? I'm gonna point out that we're using nor. So where would we want to go to find the right verb? What's your thought, Capri? Um, I want to say B, have had, but it might be has. There you go, has. Yeah, mm -hmm. just what we're saying, um, D, has. Uh, it's that situation with nor, or, or, uh, you want to look at whatever the last part of the subject is. Fellow yeah, I was just reading the previous sentence because it kind of sounds like it was in the past. So that's yeah. why I first had said maybe it was the other one. That's something you got to watch out for too. It's like what tense, you know, it's supposed to be past or present tense. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, good call. I mean, that, that's something you want to do. You want to make sure you're getting the right context. So perfect. Okay, um, and next, Mr. Sanchez's work, Mr. Sanchez's work ethic, his willingness to put in long hours when necessary, and his can-do attitude. I think the answer is A. <laughs> has made him such a special you employee. <coughs> wait, wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's B, half B. <clears throat> yeah, Mr. Sanchez's work ethic, his willingness to put in long hours when necessary, and his can-do attitude, half made. Um, <clears throat> in this case, the, the subject is, it's not Mr. Sanchez, it's his work ethic his willingness yeah. to pin on long hours and his can-do attitude. So that's really easy, you know, to, to kind of confuse. But if you have like, a, you know, what we were talking about before, if you have a series or you have a compound noun like this, um, it'll be a uh, plural verb. So uh, yeah, so his can-do attitude have made him such a special employee. When a project was due on a tight deadline, he pitched in to ensure that all the work was done on time and done well. Whether a simple task or high level design assignment with complex specifications was given to him, he was always enthusiastic and conscientious and completed the job. Uh, he was <clears throat> happy to help, help out and make copies or coffee when needed. And he also was able 
or he was also able to make significant contributions to our design work. Mr. Sanchez is a quick learner who needs very little supervision. Our new suite of drafting software programs were, I wanna, see they're talking in past tense. I, mm -hmm. um, maybe it's have been. This one got me too, but it's actually, it's it's was. Okay. And I'm not following. This is crazy. Yeah. <clears throat> so our new suite of drafting software programs was no match for Mr. Sanchez's technical uh, skill. This one's a little strange, but new suite is actually your subject. So it's a singular noun, and you're going to need that singular verb for it. Um, and I think when I went through this initially, I had a little trouble with it too, because uh, I was thinking <laughs> software programs was going to be the the uh, subject, and that would be were. But um, once I went through and realized, you know, since we're talking about more advanced sentence structure, the verb wasn't going to be right next to the subject. And that's mm -hmm. why I was like, oh, okay, all right, that makes sense. All right, and finally, I strongly recommend Mr. Sanchez, I, as well as my colleagues here, are, <laughs> this, uh, it's am, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, there you go, am, c. Yep, so it's that phrase, right? It's that interruptive phrase. Mm -hmm. We don't have to worry about that. I starts the sentence am, and again, that's one of those things. Can I take that out? Does it change the meaning? Does it, is it awkward? So if you take out that phrase and you're left with, I am confident that he will be a fine addition to your firm and you're not changing the, the verb tenses or anything there by doing that. Okay, good job. Go on to the workbook. Okay, same thing here, uh, a few more examples in, in our explanations. So when compound subjects are joined by nor, the verb agrees with the subject that is closer. So in this case, snow. So neither rain nor snow prevent mill from being delivered. That's incorrect. And the correct will be neither rain nor snow prevents the mail from being delivered. Prevents will be the singular verb. Uh, the next one, my car, like my kitchen and my closets, are very messy. That's incorrect. We want to replace that with my car, like my kitchen and my closets, is very messy. Right? So that aside, that interrupting phrase doesn't change the, the verb subject agreement. So like my kitchen and my closets, you can take that out. You're just left with my car is very messy. So does not make the subject plural. My car is singular. You want is for your singular verb. Uh, incorrect example. Although each of the movies are up for an award, uh, for, up for an award, only one will win. You want to replace that with although each of the movies is up for an award, only one will win. Each here takes a singular verb. Uh, incorrect. In the laundry basket is your shirt, jeans, and socks. We want to correct that with in the laundry basket are your shirt, jeans, and socks. Uh, the subject shirt, jeans, and socks. See here we have the subject at the end of the sentence. So doesn't matter where it's located though, that's still plural. And in this case, basket is not the subject. The shirt, jeans, and socks are the subject, so that's gonna be the plural verb are. And finally, the family go on vacation each year. Uh, that's incorrect, the family is acting as a whole, so it takes a singular verb, right? Just like we said, collective noun, uh, the family goes on vacation each year. So let's see what we have here. 
Okay, so find the subject closest to the verb and neither nor construction. If the subject is singular, use a singular verb. If it is plural, use a plural verb. The first part of the subject does not matter. Okay, let's see here. Each of my daughters are talented. What do you think, Capri? I think the answer is B. Yes, B. So each of my daughters is talented. Uh, going right to it, right? Each we treat as singular. So keep that in mind. Whether it's my daughters or not, it's going to be the singular verb. So B. And next, neither the cats nor the dog are allowed in the house. What do you think about this one? I think the answer is B again. Yes, B. And it's that simple, you know, we're looking for whatever is after nor, whatever, if it's singular, plural, that's what we use. So in this case, the dog, singular, we're going to have a singular verb, R. So the answer is B. Okay, drop down here. Experienced filters know that staging a home before putting it on the market can dramatically increase the selling price. Staging involves enhancing the home's appearance so that it is appealing to the greatest number of potential buyers. A cluttered home that has been poorly maintained as well as an empty home with no furniture or decorations. What do we want there, A, B, C, or D? C. Very good, C is unappealing. So, you know, the, the thing we've been talking about uh, above and beyond, you know, sort of the individual uh, you know, ideas here of whether it's like verb noun agreement or uh, advanced pronouns, you know, all this sort of building more complex sentences is also mm -hmm. keeping them simple and streamlining them. If you look here, that's what this does. A cluttered home that has been poorly maintained as well as an empty home with no furniture or decorations is unappealing. Uh, you can see that it's also, you know, less awkward than some of these other phrases. Do not appeal to most buyers. Uh, it's simplifying it a little bit, but more importantly, a cluttered home is our subject. It is singular, is, will be our verb to go with that. Okay, uh, well-staged homes are furnished, but each of the rooms, A, B, C, or D, I think the answer is B. I'm gonna point this out. Each. A. Oh, yeah. it's A. 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 There you go. It's just that simple. This is another one that can that can you know um, throw you off, right? Because you have rooms. That's gonna be plural. But look, and you know, words like all and each, things like that. You want it. You want to kind of double check if you see the word each. Um, you know, double check and see if your verb and noun agree. So it's going to be A. So, but each of the rooms is free of clutter and furniture is not crowded. Uh, staging does not mean that homes should look bare. For example, you don't want a living room with only a sofa pushed against a wall opposite a TV. A seating arrangement that includes at least a sofa, an armchair, and a coffee table looks best. Editing down, organizing, and getting rid of clutter. B. Let's look here. Do we have a series? I think it's C. C. Yeah. So those are treated as plurals when you have a, a series like this, when you have more than one. Editing down, organizing, and getting rid of clutter are key to effective staging. You don't want too many knickknacks or too many personal items. You want the potential buyers to see the home as theirs, not to be reminded of you and your family by seeing all your photos and mementos. 
clean the home as if you had guests coming to visit. Newspapers piled on tables or chairs don't make the best first impression to either guests or buyers. Tidy up bookcases, edit down how many objects are placed on tables and clean out closets. A fresh coat of paint in the interior rooms is almost always a good idea. No buyer likes to see scuffed or dirty walls. A number of buyers, A, B, or C, A, B, C, or D. A. A. C here. A, a no buyer likes to C. see scuffed. Huh? Let's try C. Buyer is your, uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I looked at the wrong sentence. A number of buyers, buyers, plural. So prefer is your plural verb. Not a number. That's a time number. Yeah, see, no, that's, if it was only, if you're only using a number, right, or the number, but in this case, buyers is going to be the, is your subject. Um, if, 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 if the subject was just a number or the number, that's when you'd want to compare those two. But in this case, buyers is, is the subject. So that's what the difference is there. All right. And uh, moving on down to all Fabco employees. Last week, we finished updating our conference calling system. As of today, all of our employees... Are we looking for here? B or B? D. D. So we, we talked about all, right? But in this case, all of our employees. So not necessarily what we, we don't need to worry about of our, but all employees, whatever comes after all is going to make that plural. So are will be our plural verb, are required to use the new Fabco messenger service. The cost of maintaining telephone lines in all of the 45 countries with Fabco offices is, is really good, B, uh, the cost, right? That is our subject. Even though it's like way up here is the first thing in the sentence, the cost is still our subject is, will be our singular verb to go with it. <clears throat> our telecommunications provider charges $50 per hour for our conference calls, even with only two participants. The new Fabco Messenger software routes audio and video over the internet, allowing us to forego <clears throat> the expensive telecommun telecommunications infrastructure altogether. This transition is estimated to save thousands of dollars every month. <clears throat> every manager with team members in other offices, as well as managers working remotely from home. A, B, C, or D there. Mm -hmm. It's... I think the answer is A. It's going to be A. Uh, every manager with team members in her office, as well as managers working remotely from home. Offices is the, um, I'm sorry, manager is the subject. So that's gonna uh, need a singular verb. So is, will be our singular verb for that. Every manager, see, you can take out basically anything else there and you still have the same message. Every manager, is encouraged to try the new video conferencing features, right? Doesn't change anything when you add all of that extra information. Okay, last one. Uh, you can obtain new headsets from your office's IT help desk. What there is, there's both, there are, or there were. The subject, I'll give you a clue here, 
the subject is compound, right? I think the answer is B. You don't need both, though. You just need. There is. There are. There, there are. Yeah. Because it's plural, right? <clears throat> our, our subject is a mono model and two stereo models. So that's going to be plural. So we use there are here. There are a mono model and two stereo models available. Um, so for that one, D, B, A, C. Gets a little tricky. You just got to keep in mind where the subject is. That's the biggest, biggest, um, you know, help to you. Okay, so new badge policy. Currently, a number of types of photo identification. We want A, B, C, or D here. D. Right, so currently a number of types of photo identification are shown by wavelength employees and contractors to gain access to the buildings on the wavelength campus. Types is our subject. Number of types of photo ID are shown. To avoid miscommunications and other security issues, the following badge policy will be in effect beginning November 15th. Uh, wavelength personnel on this campus A. <laughs> now this is one of those confusing ones. All required. This is going to be A, B, C, or D. Wavelength personnel, personnel in this case is plural. That's a plural ver, uh, noun. Uh, so I would under completely understand if, if you know you 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 would think of that as a uh, as a collective noun instead of a, a plural one. But because that's plural, wavelength personnel on this campus D are required because we need that plural verb uh, to comply with this policy. No exceptions will be made. So, yeah, it's 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 D. It's 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 kind of uh, that one. You know, it's it's a bit of a trap because it it looks sort of like a collective noun, right? It's understandable if you you would use is there in place of are, but because it's a plural noun. It's going to be R. So probably not going to run into that too often, but kind of keep that in mind. Make sure you try to uh, understand the difference between the, the plural and compound nouns. All right. Uh, and then all employees or contractors must wear their badges at all times while in the facility. Previous policy required the badges are, or IDs be shown only at point of entry. Badges must be clearly visible at all times. Clothing should not obstruct a clear view of the badge. Employees have customarily worn badges on shirt pockets where they are often obscured by jackets or sweaters. Employees and contractors must wipe their badges at each entry door, even if the door is already open. Too often these days, an employee enters his door with a group of people, including other employees or visitors to the facility, So once you look at the subject here, an employee enters a door. You think the answer is A. Answers C. Um, one, one thing to think about here, and um, I see why I see why you're looking at that, Capri, right? Uh, but the memo itself is in present tense, right? So keep that in mind throughout. Um, that's going to help a little bit. And then also right there, an employee is singular. So our singular verb will be holds. And that's one of those two, you know, you're, you get thrown a lot of information and it's about weeding that out and finding out where your subject is. 
So an employee enters the door with a group of people, including other employees or visitors to the facility, holds up the card to show security and passes through. This method no longer will be permissible. Employees and contractors without badges must enter the building through the main doors to obtain a temporary badge. Neither department heads nor any other supervisor Point out our subject is separated by nor. So what do we want to look at here? What do we go for? Is allowed. Is allowed, D. Yep. So once again, whatever comes after nor or or, is, is what we look at. So here it's supervisor, it's singular. Our verb is singular, is allowed to authorize security guard to ignore this regulation. So D, D, C, D will be our answers there for the last one. Okay, so we'll move on to parallelism. Um, any questions on the advanced subject verb agreement before we move on? Is it possible to put the, um, as you see at the beginning, they gave us the examples and the rules. Is it possible that you can put that on Google Classroom for study? Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll get as much information on there as I can uh, okay, for that. Yep, I'll see what all I can find. And also, you know, you might want to check back. Um, <clears throat> I always try to get up like the, uh, the video and, you know, a little bit of the, um, you know, the helpful stuff. The, the first hour or two after we have class because it's fresh in my head. You might want to check back because uh, if I ever find anything useful, um, you know, a day or two later, if I, if I run into something, I might throw some other things on there. So if you're going through, you know, say like on Wednesday or something after class, you know, scroll back through those few days and you might see something new. Um, no guarantees, but every once in a while, if I find something, I'll, I'll put it up there for you guys. All right. Awesome. Thank you. No problem. Okay. Parallelism, big fancy word. <clears throat> uh, so by the time you complete this lesson, uh, you'll be able to show that two or more ideas have equal importance using parallel structure, recognize and create parallel structure. And we're gonna see what that's about right here. Here we go. When a sentence reflects parallelism, also called parallel structure. It uses the same pattern to show that two or more ideas have equal importance. Often, parallelism extends beyond a single sentence. You can create a pattern using the same word forms or sentence structures to emphasize that ideas are connected. Writers deliberately use repetition when employing parallel structure. The repetition of certain words creates a pattern that draws attention to important points. Parallel structure is a way to make writing clearer and avoid wordiness or awkwardness. Right, so uh, a lot of this is about making sure that your sentence is balanced <laughs> and it'll make sense when we get to the, exam to the examples and make sure that all the ideas are weighted the same. Uh, it, it, it's it's basically it helps avoid like it says wordiness or awkwardness um and it it just once you see it you it, it's one of those things that's a lot easier to show and you'll get the get the uh idea here so right here what's it's awkward to say i like running to swim and biking that's off balance, right? All we need to say to improve that is I like running, swimming, and biking. All those verbs are the same, uh, they're, they're formed the same, same tense and everything. So we don't need to emphasize one more than the other. We don't need any extra information to keep that parallel, keep, keep that construction balanced. We just say, I like running, swimming, biking. Uh, same thing, next sentence, my friend's son, and the daughter of my boss are both in the military. And that's a little, it's off balance because of where we're putting the subject 
uh, and, and, and the description. So my friend's son and my boss's daughter are family and uh, are both uh, in the military. You see, that way we're using the same construction for both parts of the subject. I could say the friend of my son and the daughter of my boss are both in the military. That would be parallel construction, right? It would, it, it would be balanced. A little wordy, though. We don't necessarily need that. So my friend's son and my boss's daughter. That way we have the same construction on both sides of the, of the subject. Using only a hot plate and she has a microwave, my girlfriend makes fabulous meals. Odd construction. All we need to do here is say using only a hot plate and a microwave, my girlfriend makes fabulous meals. Need to eliminate some of that wordiness. Down here, same thing. Each Tuesday I go to the gym and exercising for an hour. That's uh, really awkward. You just say each Tuesday, I go to the gym and exercise for an hour. Now, if you just look at, I go to the gym and exercising for an hour, that's awkward, that's incorrect. Bouncing it out, we put, I go to the gym and exercise for an hour. It's weighted the same there. And our final example, to err is human, something that is divine though is forgiving. We simply state to err is human, to forgive is divine. Uh, and then here, I love you. I loved you yesterday. Today, I love you too. And will tomorrow as well as today and yesterday. <laughs> really awkward, really wordy, really off balance. So we correct that by saying I love you yesterday. I love you today. And I will love you tomorrow. So we start with that subject and verb in front of each one and it balances it out. And then uh, our little boxes over here, the use of and, but, or, or to connect items in a series should alert you to examine the sentence for parallel structure. And just like that, what we have right here, right? I like running to swim and biking. If you're using and, but, or, or in, in some type of series, or to connect things, these should all be balanced. You shouldn't have anything in front of swim unless you have something in front of running and biking. And then second, usually you eliminate wordiness by avoiding unnecessary repetition as shown in the wrong sentences. Uh, however, if you deliberately repeat words for emphasis, be sure to maintain parallel structure. So just like I said, if you use it once, you have to use it again. Um, and, you know, you might want to do that for emphasis every once in a while, but uh, generally speaking, you, you can avoid that wordiness. Uh, but if you do it once, you have to do it every time in the sentence. And you'll notice this mostly, uh, you know, in your, in your own writing when it comes to those series. You want to make sure that the verb is in the correct place every time or, or your, your series of objects. I'm sorry, uh, nouns or verbs, whatever it may be has the right tense, uh, has the same um, descriptors, whatever it may be in front of it. Okay. And then our test taking tip. When writing your essay, you will probably use parallel structure when including specific details and examples. Be sure to present such items equally using the correct word forms. And that's what this is all about. Just making sure that every part of that sentence uses the same type of sentence construction. Okay, so garage bands often write their songs and performing them as well. What do we wanna change that to here? A, B, C, or D. Garage bands often write and perform their own songs. Garage bands often write their songs as well as often performing them. Garage bands often their often write their own songs as well as performing them. Or often writing their own songs, garage bands perform them as well. What seems the least awkward there? A. A. Very good. Yep. Straightforward. If it sounds simpler and it's not missing any information, 
We don't change anything there. We don't change any tenses. Garage bands often write and perform their own songs. So it's going to be A. Okay. Here we go. So I'll read this through real quick and then the questions at the bottom. So the trouble with asking people to save energy is that the task sounds daunting. Sure, most people would like saving energy and to have more money in their pockets. However, they're busy working as well, working as well as families. What people need to get the ball rolling are a few simple tips that they can use immediately. Take a walk through your home right now. Turn off appliances, 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 <laughs> and electrical, electrical gadgets that no one is using. You can ensure that you are turning off lights, computer equipment, turn off television sets, DVD players, and other items. Guess what? You just saved energy. To make this task simpler, the next time you do it, add power strips to your home so that you can turn off multiple machines with a single switch. While you're taking an energy tour of your home, adjust the therm thermostat. You don't need to be uncomfortable, but choose a temperature that is moderate. Also, don't forget to turn down the thermostat on the water heater to about 120 degrees. You don't need to spend money heating water that's too hot for anyone to use. Showering can also be more efficient than taking a bath. Showering uses less water, particularly if you have a low flow shower head. Run your dishwasher only when it is fully loaded with dishes. If you have a small load of dishes, washing them by hand is more efficient than to wash them in the dishwasher. When you run the dishwasher, when you do run the dishwasher, use the air dry cycle instead of the dishwasher's drying cycle. Similarly, consider air drying clothes. A clothes dryer uses a great deal of energy. Hanging clothes to dry saves energy, and it can also reduce unwanted, unwanted heat in your home during month, summer months. So here, we will look at which the best way to rewrite the underlying portion of the sentence. Sure, most people would like saving energy and to have more money in their pockets. What do we want to replace that with? We're using saving in the first part here. We want to match that. So what do we need to change? I think the answer is C. C, there you go. Now we've balanced it out, right? So C, sure, most people would like saving energy and having more money in their pockets, saving and having, right? So now we've balanced out the sentence. Now it's parallel. Everything else here is, is not giving us that same construction on both sides of the and. And so that same paragraph there. So we'll drop down here. So which is the best to rewrite this sentence? However, they're busy working as well as families. That's awkward. How do we want to change that? The answer is D. Very good. Yep, so D. However, they're busy with their work and families. That's going to be equal construction on either side there. They're busy working as well as families. It's, that's nonsensical. Um, that's 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 a uh, uh, poor formation there. So we make sure that it makes sense. We go straight to D. They're busy with their work and families, meaning that work and they're, you know they're busy with their work and families. Two things that they're busy with. And then turn off appliances and electrical gadgets that no one is using. You can ensure that you are turning off lights, computer equipment, turn off television sets, DVD players, and so on. How can we reduce the wordiness here? What are we looking for? I think the answer is A. Yes. So first off, right, we see the phrase turn off more than once. We know right away that we need to eliminate that. That should only appear once. We're turning off everything. We're turning off lights, computer equipment, television sets, DVD players, and so on. So we don't need to restate turn off. It's a series of all the same stuff. So turn off appliances, electrical 
gadgets, lights, computer equipment, television sets, DVD, player, DVD players, and other items that no one is using. We eliminate quite a bit there uh, in, in, in that wordiness. Um, so A is going to be the right answer there. And finally, if you have a small load of dishes, washing them by hand is more efficient than to wash them in the dishwasher. How are we going to correct that? I think the answer is C. Very good. You know, if you read through these, you get a pretty quick sense of what sounds correct, right? And what you need to play, uh, replace it with. And it's, it might be actually one of the less confusing, you know, activities that we've done here lately. Uh, if you have a small load of dishes, washing them by hand, well, I'm sorry, washing them by hand is more efficient than washing them in the dishwasher, right? So washing them by hand, is more efficient than washing them. So washing them, we get that in the first part of our phrase, washing them by hand. So we want to finish the phrase the same way, washing them in the dishwasher. Right, that's the parallel construction right there. Washing them appearing in the fir first part of, this, of the phrase, washing them in the last part of the phrase. Okay. Here we go. <clears throat> All right, one more unit here. Or, I'm sorry, one more lesson. If I actually pull it up here. Here we go. So it's all about balancing. A sentence has parallelism or parallel structure when it displays the same pattern to show that specific ideas have equal importance. Writers create parallelism by using the same word forms and sentence structure when stating their ideas. For example, verbs and verb forms should be written in a consistent form, browsing, comparing, and budgeting, uh, right? I'll use that ing. Or let's say I was to say to browse. If I said to browse, then I would need to say to compare and to budget. That's parallel structure. Okay. And here in the first example, use parallelism. Using parallelism helps eliminate wordiness. Tommy plays both wide receiver and also is the team's cornerback. We can eliminate some of that. All we need to say is Tommy plays both wide receiver and cornerback. That's equal distribution there, right? That's that that's equal weight to both things. We don't also we don't need to say that he also is the team's cornerback. We just say he plays wide receiver and cornerback. And then in the second example, the incorrect sentence mixes a noun, perseverance, a gerund, working, and an infinitive to work. The corrected sentence uses all nouns to show equal importance and clarity. So that's the other thing, right? If you're using a series like that, it either needs to be all verbs. It, they, they, it has to match in your parts of speech, either verbs or noun or what have you. I learned many important lessons about working hard, perseverance, and to work as a team. Can't do that in, in, in a series like that. It has to match. So they changed that. I learned many important lessons about hard work perseverance and teamwork. So making sure that all of the elements match there. Okay. And then if a sentence contains a connecting word, such as and, but, or, or, you can assume that the items or ideas in the sentence have equal importance, right? So just the same way that they have equal importance, you wanna make sure that they all parallel each other in their structure. <laughs> so first one here, Chris set aside time to ride his bike and study and studying for the test. What do we want to replace that with? Well, what do we need to replace here? Studying with study. Studying with to study, yeah, B. Yeah. 
right? So to ride, Chris set aside time to ride. We need to match to ride his bike, right? So to study for the test is going to be the same construction, to ride and to study. That makes a parallel B. Coaching Little League provides an opportunity both to serve as a coach and acting as a role model for young people. What do we need to replace there? I think we need to replace acting with to act. Very good. D. So, once again, um, you know, an opportunity both to serve as a coach and to act. Parallel construction to serve and to act. Okay. So, finding affordable childcare. Recent changes in the economy have made it increasingly difficult for people to stretch their earnings to cover their expenses. For people with children, the rising costs of childcare have proven to be a particularly difficult expense to manage. As a result, many parents have begun to seek out or creating new types of reliable and affordable childcare. One affordable childcare option involves enlisting friends, family members, or the people who live in their neighborhood to care for, your, for young children. These people may be willing to provide care at a rate that is far less expensive than what parents might find at an ordinary daycare center. Some individuals may provide care in exchange for some other service that the parents can provide for them, such as yard work or house sitting. Many parents also find security in knowing that their children are being supervised and cared for by a familiar adult. Some parents organize babysitting groups or a co-op is formed by friends and neighbors, for example, Five sets of parents might rotate responsibility for babysitting each other's children one each day, one day each week. Although there can be many children to babysit on their assigned day, the parents in the co-op gain four days in which they can work, which they can go to work without having to pay for childcare. For parents with school-aged children, an in-home babysitter may be another affordable childcare option. Often, Adolescents or college students from the neighborhood may be willing to look after young children in the family home because such work is flexible and not very formal. Many young people will take on babysitting work for a small fee. So first one here, <clears throat> which is the best way to write the underlying portion of the sentence? As a result, many parents have begun to seek out or creating new types of reliable <clears throat> and affordable childcare. So seek out or creating. How do we need to change that? The answer is C. C. Very, very good. Yeah. So to seek out or to create, we need to make sure that's parallel. To seek out, to create is going to, we're going to switch out. <clears throat> we're just switching out creating for to create, basically, to make that correct. Okay. And next one. Uh, one affordable child care option involves enlisting friends, family members, or the people who live in their neighborhood to care for their young children. Again, we're changing friends, family members, or the people who live in their neighborhood. How are we going to simplify that? What looks good there? I think the answer is C. There you go. Yep, C. Uh, again, right? <clears throat> We're looking for equal construction, equal weight of those three ideas or, 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 or three items. So family or friends, family members, or neighbors, right? That whole or the people who lived in their neighborhood. Well, we generally think of those as neighbors, right? And that's going give, to give that balance to that series of items there. C. Friends, family, members, or neighbors. And some parents organize babysitting groups or a co-op is formed by friends and neighbors. How do we need to change that? That one's a little trickier. I think the answer is A. Yeah. Okay, close. 
but instead of by, we want with. So everything there is correct except for your, your, your preposition. So some parents organize babysitting groups or co-ops with friends and neighbors. Um, yeah, that, um, so one thing there, like we have formed down here, formed and organized, you're used very similarly. We don't need both. So we eliminate that for one. Uh, some parents organize babysitting groups or co-ops with friends and neighbors. So we, we don't need the comma here and we just go on to or co-ops and then we, we add with friends and neighbors. So yeah, you're on the right track there, just the wrong preposition. Uh, and let's see, because such work is flexible and is not very formal, many young people will take on babysitting work for a small fee. What do we need to change here? Do you think the answer is A? Yeah, just too wordy and it doesn't match the rest. So we change, it is not very formal to informal. That's the other thing. If you have one word that can take the place of a phrase or you know an over explanation, you just go right for that. So because such work is informal, uh, many young people will take on babysitting work for a small fee. So I need, or flexible and informal, you could say that, you know, because such work is flexible and informal. Okay. And then she knows you can find some fantastic used items at garage sales and yard sales and sales that people have before they move our grade two. How do we wanna fix this? Seems like there's a lot we can eliminate here. Maybe the answer is C. So she knows you can find some fantastic use items at garage sales, yard sales, and moving sales. Is that what I had? Yes, C. Um, so she knows you can find some fantastic use items at garage sales, yard sales, and moving sales. That's it. That's all you need. Rest of that is over explanation. It's not balanced because it doesn't use the same <clears throat> structure and just way, way, way too uh, complicated. Okay. Uh, of course, sleeping late on Saturday is nice. Pull that down some. But to keep a little extra money in your pocket is a more useful alternative. That's kind of wordy. <clears throat> Seems there's some things we could do to make that a little simpler and balance it out. I think the answer is A. Right on, A. So over, uh, I'm sorry, of course, sleeping late on Saturday is nice, but keeping a little extra money in your pocket is nicer. Uh, that way we balance it out. We eliminate that wordiness. And we are giving equal weight to both ideas of uh, sleeping late and earning money. So, hey. Then you can spend $1 on the same book used and spending the other $9 on different items. I think the answer is B. Good. Yeah. So you can spend one dollar on the same book used and spend the other nine dollars on different items. We use spend here. So we're going to use spend down here. You have to use uh, the same uh, construction for your verb on either side of and. So you can spend one dollar on the same book used and spend the other $9 on different items. All the rest of that is just too wordy 
and you get into uh, that same situation where you're not using the same construction. Number 10, a sturdy desk, an office chair, or a cabinet for filing can last for years. How do we need to change that? B. B, right? The other one, it just doesn't match. Uh, you know, sturdy desk, office chair, simple, straightforward. Cabinet for filing does not match. Filing cabinet, however, gets those words in the right order, right? Sturdy, office, those are used as adjectives here, right? Desk, chair, those are our nouns. They're coming second. So we don't want to start this last bit of the phrase with a noun. We need an adjective or descriptive word in front of it. So sturdy desk, office chair, or filing cabinet makes that construction parallel. Okay, last little part here. Next Saturday, the West Westchester Youth Group is sponsoring a kid Kids for Kids Day in Oak Brook. Students from three Westchester County schools, Daly Junior High, Ryder Middle School, A, B, C, or D here. How do we keep that parallel? A. Straightforward, right? We have Daly Junior High. Ryder Middle School. There's nothing in front of them. We don't have any other descriptors. We don't have anything else in front of those words. So we just put and Clifton Academy. That makes it parallel. Uh, will volunteer their time to help raise money for local kids in need. Events will include a car wash, a bake sale, a lawn mowing service, and... I think the answer is D. D. Yeah. So again, right here, right? Simple, it's all just uh, nouns, a car wash, a bake sale, a lawn mowing service, a tree pruning service, all similar construction right there. Nothing fancy, just making sure that each part of that series matches. Next, funds raised at each of the events will benefit several, uh, several area children's charities, including the Oak Brook Youth Crisis Center and the Westchester County Homeless Youth Support Agency. Money made at each event will go directly to these charities. The members of the Westchester Youth Group need your support making next Saturday a success. Prices will be irresistibly low on all items for sale and all services offered. For example, full car wash and dry will cost you only $1 or you can have your lawn mowed for as little as $5, depending on the size of your yard. The bake sale will have unbeatable prices. For example, you can buy four cookies We're buying cookies and pie. How are we gonna explain that? They're both a dollar. I think the answer is C. The answer is C. Let's see, for example, you can buy four cookies for one dollar or even a slice of pie for one dollar. Grammatically correct, but wordy. Okay. So what we want to do, how can we simplify that? Then go with B. B. Yep. Straightforward. You can buy four cookies or a slice of pie for one dollar. So that way, you know, we don't have anything in front of four cookies. We don't have anything in front of a slice of pie. And then we throw the price on at the end for the explanation. So, or a slice of pie. Okay, last one. If you can help Kids for Kids, head to one of our participating schools this Saturday and take part in one of our events. You can buy great baked goods at Daily Junior High, get your car washed at Ryder Middle School, or... where you, we're gonna buy, we're gonna wash. What else are we gonna do? I think the answer is C. 
C, sign up. So our verbs in front on each one of those phrases, right? Buy great baked goods at Daily Junior High. Get your car washed at Ryder Middle School. Sign up for lawn services. Buy, get, sign. All of our verbs, we're starting with that. That makes this um, construction parallel. All right. So that last part there is A, D, B, and C. So, any questions on that? 